Hey, John here. Let's talk about how you create a two-dimensional vector, okay? We know how to create a one-dimensional vector. Let's say we create a vector of integers like this, right? And we can uh, construct one that has five elements in it and set each of those elements to the value 23 using this style of, uh, of, of constructor, right? And, you know, that's fine and dandy. We can also print it out using a nice simple for loop like this and print out each of those elements with three uh, characters each on one line, and then we got a end of line to end it. And uh, the rest of this is commented out. The blue stuff here is all commented out by this pound if zero right there. So let's go ahead and compile this and run it to make sure the world still makes sense like it used to 10 minutes ago, right? A one-dimensional vector with five mil. One, two, three, four, five, right? And if you use the index notation to get to them with like either the square brackets or the at member for the vector, this would be element number zero and this would be element number four, right? Okay, so let's go back and edit this. That's all right for one-dimensional vectors, but how do I make a two-dimensional one? All right, Let's have a look, see what's going on here, all right? Let's go ahead and move that down there. Let's just focus on this bit of code right here, okay? The two-dimensional vector. Well, when we did a one-dimensional, what, you know, what did we really do, right? We said, I want a vector, a container of integers, and I want five of those integers, and I want to initialize every one to 23. What the heck is going on here? Well, instead of putting just integers in a vector, I'm going to put an entire vector in a vector. And up here, when I said I want to be able to put five of these integers into a vector container, what I can do down here is I can put some number of vectors into the vector container. And then inside each of those vectors, I want to put some number of integers. Okay? So what we're really doing here is see what I highlighted right here. Okay? That is exactly the same, like, semantic role that's played by just int up here. Vector of integer. Vector of something. And give me five of those somethings and initialize them to this. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating vector of something. And I'm going to call that V2. And I want five of those somethings. Okay. And I want to initialize them to this. So what is this thing doing? Well, this thing is constructing a vector of integers with two elements. Just like this, in a way, if you think about it, constructs an integer whose value is 23. And the compiler then creates five of those and puts each one of those five into this vector here. Well, this time it's going to come down here and I say, I want to make five vectors that each have two elements in them. So I'm going to create a vector of two elements of type int. And then this guy's going to make five of those vectors with two integers in each one and put the whole lot into this vector over here called V2. So uh, it's, you know, you can sort of see that this here plays the same role as this right here, right? Okay. And this whole thing here plays the same role as this right here. And we know what a vector of integers is. We're just storing a bunch of vectors inside a vector. That's how this thing works. Now, I probably should have done this just to make it more explicitly clear. Let's go ahead and initialize all of these inside ones to, let's say, uh, 99, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to create a vector. And in that vector, we're going to create and insert a whole bunch of other vectors, five of them to be exact. And each of those five are going to have a pair of elements each, and all of them will be initialized at 99. Then we're going to print this whole thing out. 
let's first look at it getting printed out and then we'll look at how we printed it out okay so there you've got your one dimensional and here's your five by two matrix now why is it five by two it's five by two because we have five elements in this outer vector, the way I like to think about it. And then this inner vector inside here, each of those five has two elements in each one. So this is like five rows, okay? The, the outer vector in this kind of the way we initialize it or the way that, that we declare this type. This outer one is the number of rows, I like to think of that, okay? And then this inner one here is going to be the number of columns. So the outer one initializes with five rows. The inner one has two columns, okay? So what does that mean? In a range-based for loop, remember the one-dimensional array? We just simply said, look, give me an i variable that will hold each one of the elements that are visited one at a time from the first element through the last element of v1. When all those elements are visited, this variable here will contain the value of each one of those elements one at a time, right? So i, in this case, must be an int because each of the elements that have to have their values assigned to this variable i uh, that come from v1, each of those elements are type int. So in this case down here, each one of the elements in v2 that are assigned to i the type of that is this vector of int. So what we're going to do here is we're going to visit a whole vector for each one of the rows, like I like to think of, the five rows of V2. We're going to visit those one at a time. And then therefore I, the value of I, will be, represent an entire vector of all the columns for each one of the rows that we're going to be visiting in V2. Okay, therefore, I can create another variable called j and tell the compiler, make it whatever type is of value, whatever type is necessary, I should say. And I'm going to tell the compiler to just make j be whatever type is necessary, such that j can hold all the values of i when they are visited one at a time. And since i is going to be a vector of integers with two elements in them, each time this outer loop runs, I can simply just print out all those j values. This loop will run for two iterations. It'll be um, i sub 0 and i sub 1 every time uh, this whole loop executes. So that's essentially printing out a row. And when I get to the end of the row, I print a carriage return so I can go on to the next row, okay? And then we go to the next element of V2, which itself is an entire vector again. And we go through all of the elements of those inner vectors, the two columns, and, and that's why that works, right? So that's why we ended up with all of these. Now, let's make sure we understand that that is indeed what happens. So I commented this out down here. Let's go ahead and put all this other code back in. So now we know we have a two-dimensional vector defined in this template notation. There's other ways to do this, by the way. This is merely only one way, okay? You can put a vector full of pointers to other vectors or, you know, other, there's a lot of ways to do this. This is just one way. The neat thing about this particular way, though, is look about, think about this for a second. Now, as long as we don't make any mistakes, okay, <laughs> we can use this notation. And it's just, just as risky as it would be in C anyway, right? Or using a regular old C array. So how does this work? What is v2 sub 0? What is the type of v2 0, right? So v2 sub 0 is what? Okay? It is one of these things. Each one of the elements of v2 is the type that's inside this template thingy. Okay? It is this answer. It is a vector of int. So if this over here represents a vector of integers, how do I get the second element from that vector of integers? Well, you just put another square brackets and say one. Okay? Because grammatically, right, semantically, this thing here represents an entire vector as does v2. How do I get element 0 out of v2? How do I refer to it? I can put square brackets with a 0. 
right? That represents a whole vector in its own right. Therefore, I can take wh whatever that is, follow it by another square brackets, and give it an element number, okay? So this will set the, uh, the right-hand column, the second column on the first row to 1-1. One, one. This one here will set that second column on the on the second row to two two and so on. All right. Now we get to the bottom down here. I just copied the same code from up here. Probably should have put that in a subroutine, but I'm lazy. Okay. Let's go ahead and compile and run this one, and we can see it works fine. Okay. So what's the takeaway here? You can create a two dimensional vector by just putting in a way, an object representing all the columns for each row inside the uh, angle brackets here, okay? Now, the key for, to make all this work and be convenient as this is, okay, has to do, a lot to do with this initialization over here. We've not only defined a vector called V2, we've also constructed it and initialized all of these values inside of it. And in doing so, it pre-filled V2 with five elements, the rows. And each of those five elements is also initialized and pre-filled with two elements, which are the columns. And initialized every one of the values of all the columns of all the rows to 99, all right? If I did not put these uh, 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 initializations in here. I mean, technically, V2 is still legal if I do this, all right? What, what do I define here? This would be an empty uh, vector of, oops. Jeez, if I could type, vectors of int, right? Okay, but if I do this, there are no rows and there are no columns in this in this vector. So the point is that if you don't have elements in V2, and in this case, elements in, in the vectors that are inside of V2, then you've got to be careful about what you do down here. All right, look, look what's going on. How did I determine the dimensions of this vector? Well, I just simply said for the rows, I asked how many elements are in V2 which is pretty reasonable, and I'm going to get five because I created a vector called V2 with five elements in it, and I'm going to use that for the rows, okay? What did I do for the columns? Well, I just went in and I grabbed, uh, I just asked how many elements are in the zero with element of V2 because each one of those was initialized like this, and because I wrote this code and initialized it this way, I know that every one of the elements in V2 has the same number of elements for the columns, right? This is going to be a rectangular matrix. If I really wanted to, I could reach into this vector and replace a row with a vector of some other size. It would no longer be a rectangular uh, matrix. And, you know, maybe that's what I want. But be careful, okay? Don't just assume this will always work. Right? Because if it turns out that V2 has no rows in it at all, this will fail. Okay? Because I just asked for the element at number element number zero here. If V2 has no rows, then this the compiler will I mean the at runtime this will die because you'll try to access the size method on a non-existent element of V2 in that case, okay? So the way this is working is simply by the convention of the design of this particular app, the style that I chose. I have a vector of vectors, and I'm pre-initializing them all so that every of the one of the five rows has two elements in them. Therefore, it's rectangular. Therefore, I know it will always have more than, than uh, zero rows in it, so this will always be okay. And I know that every row has the same number of elements in it. Therefore, if I just simply ask the size of any row, then that will be the size of every row so that I can print this heading out, okay? And then, of course, the nested uh, uh, range-based for loop to print it out, okay?
So hopefully this is an introduction, you know, a toehold of some kind to start thinking about what it means to create two-dimensional vectors. And obviously you can continue this to three dimensions and four and so on. Thanks for watching. See you next time.